It is a widely held belief among conservative evangelical Christians in the West that the Bible teaches that the earth specifically and the universe more broadly are young, as opposed to the mainstream ideas among geologists and biologists that both the earth and universe are very old. This understanding is called young earth creationism, and it is based on what is usually described as a quote literal or common sense reading of Genesis chapters 1 and 2, as well as other relevant passages of the Bible. My assumption is that I'm, I'm going to take scripture in a grammatical, historical way. In other words, I'm, I'm taking what it says, that it's the word of God, that's what it claims, and I know there's different sorts of literature. There's history, poetry, I'm going to let it speak to me, and the best of my ability, the best of my ability, let those words in their plain, ordinary sense, the, 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 the obvious meaning, the plain sense, let them speak to me. Organizations such as Answers in Genesis and Creation Ministries International have taken up this cause at many levels of Christian society, publishing materials that teach this interpretation of the Bible for use in local churches and Bible studies. In addition, many prominent conservative Christian leaders in the West also endorse this view, citing a supposed necessary consistency of interpretation to be applied across the Bible, i.e., if we can't trust Genesis, how can we trust anything written about Jesus? The implications of tampering with Genesis stretch throughout the whole of the Scripture. The implications are massive, and not just for what is said in Scripture, but for how you interpret Scripture. If you can play fast and loose with Genesis and say that it doesn't mean what it says, you know, when does it start meaning what it says? You know, when do you kick in? Genesis 3, 5, 9, Exodus? You know, where do you start saying, okay, now we can take it for what it says? When you somehow make those chapters a different category altogether and non-historical, what are you doing to all of the rest of the Bible? The Bible that assumes that it's true, the Bible that treats it as historically true, uh, the Bible that refers back to all of the characters that are there, does that then negate the whole of the Bible? Well, yes. As, as far as the age of the earth, the age of the universe, uh, even when it comes to the fossil record, that's why I really challenge Christians. If you're going to believe in millions of years for the fossil record, you've got a problem with the Bible. And the gospel is based in real history. And it's the history in Genesis 1 to 11. If that history is not true, how can you trust the gospel based in that history? You can't believe Genesis 1 to 11 is written. You have no foundation for the rest of the Bible. This type of language is very powerful and it results in many lay Christians seeing a young earth as the only reliable way to understand the scriptures. There are voices who present a differing opinion among conservative evangelical Christianity. However, they are often met with some skepticism, which is where this series of videos comes in. The command of scripture is to, quote, be quick to listen and slow to speak, and to treat others the way you want to be treated. I realize that there will be a portion of people who will not respect what the scriptures say in this area, they will rush to judgment about me and my arguments. For those who are willing to hear another perspective, let me lay out my position and background up front so that you will know what I am and am not arguing for. I do not believe that the Bible endorses a particular age of the earth or universe. In other words, I am not arguing for or against the earth or universe being young. This video is not about the age of the earth or universe per se. Rather, this response is based on whether or not an honest interpretation of the Bible mandates that a Christian acknowledge the earth or universe to be young. My concerns are based on hermeneutics, not science. I am not a scientist, so I am not in a position to comment on whether biology, geology, or astronomy confirm or deny a young earth or universe. Thus, this response is not concerned with the scientific elements of young earth thought. This response is aimed to address young earth creationism as a method of Bible interpretation. My focus will be on scripture and its use. At this point, I know there are many keyboard warrior Christians who are preparing to riddle the comments with cries of heresy. If that's you, consider for a moment that I have produced much content on this channel teaching and defending such things as the deity of Christ, the doctrine of the Trinity, salvation by grace alone through faith alone, the historical reality of the Old Testament, and the preservation and transmission of the Bible, as well as providing refutation of various cult groups and woke narratives of certain progressive Christian influencers. I am not arguing for evolution or Darwinism. I am not a leftist liberal revisionist. 
I am a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, a sinner saved by God's grace and a lover of him and his word. If this is you also, I am your brother, and I appeal to you as such to hear me out before you cast a stone. For what it's worth, I fellowship in a church that predominantly holds to a young earth hermeneutic. Both of my pastors, the majority of my elders and fellow deacons, as well as most of our congregation, believe the young earth interpretation. Our children's ministry, of which I have been a teacher for many years, uses curricula from Answers in Genesis, as well as for our annual vacation Bible school. If you end up disagreeing with me, that's fine. It would not be the first time. Whether you agree or disagree, however, your conduct and mine needs to be rooted in brotherly love and affection. Misrepresenting what's said or refusing to listen to a different opinion from a brother brings dishonor to Christ, especially on a non-essential doctrine such as the age of the earth. If someone sincerely believes the honest understanding of the Bible is one that promotes a young earth, this doesn't bother me. What does bother me is the implication that any other understanding of the Bible is, at best, inconsistent or, at worst, heretical. Let's start with God's Word. From here, let's look at the world around us. Let's check all this out. And let's see what comports to God's Word. So that seems to be our issue is, are we sure we're talking about the same God? One of the most popular sources of young earth creationism is the film Is Genesis History, which currently has nearly 4 million views on YouTube alone. Given this film's popularity, I will be basing this series of responses on the film's structure, with supporting quotes from other individuals of similar disposition. The film is hosted by Dr. Del Tackett. Toward the end, he makes the following statement. And we need to be humble because we have a tendency to base our ideas on our own small set of experiences. This is true, and it is something we have to be on guard against when we read the Bible. Interpreting the Bible honestly means interpreting it in context. The context of Genesis was the context of its human author, Moses. To me, these are obvious things. I think they'll be obvious to you, but they might feel a little uncomfortable. If you're going to affirm grammatical, historical interpretation, then you can't affirm certain things. The context for understanding Genesis is not the Roman Catholic Church, neither is the Protestant Reformation. 20th and 21st century evangelicalism is always, is also not the context for Genesis. Our thinking about Genesis has been historically conditioned by this, the things we have to deal with. Things like, I'll put this next one up, post-Darwinistic Christianity. The church has had to deal with Darwin. But the fact that we have to fight with Darwinism, or that we want to fight with Darwinism, or we feel we ought to fight with Darwinism, has nothing to do with the context of Genesis. What's in Genesis is not a response to Darwin. Darwin wasn't around. It's not the context for Genesis. The context for understanding Genesis is the historical, religious, literary, and quote-unquote scientific context, as, as much as you could use that term, It was the context in which it was written. That is its context. Moses lived somewhere around 1400 to 1500 BC, in a world dominated by the ancient Egyptians and their neighboring powers. In Moses' day, there were no discussions of evolution, Charles Darwin, or any of the modern scientific fields. There were no submarines to explore the oceans, no planes to explore the sky, and no rockets to explore outer space. There were no microscopes, telescopes, telephones, internet, and nobody spoke English, Latin, or even Greek. An infamous story from church history should cause us to exercise prudence in our attempts to properly understand the Bible. I've said many times the church has got egg on its face by taking positions against science because the church thought they were speaking biblically when they weren't, because the church had imported into the old biblical understanding an older scientific perspective like geocentricity and because the bible speaks about the heavens moving or the sun moving across the sky does not mean that the that the bible is teaching that the uh, earth is the center of the solar system that was uh, an assumption brought from the scientific community of copernicus i mean of the ptolemaic view into the scriptures and the church got itself in big trouble
The Prussian astronomer Nicholas Copernicus is the man credited with recognizing that the Earth is part of a heliocentric system. In other words, that the Earth orbits around the Sun. This view is common knowledge today, but during his lifetime, the prevailing view among Christian nations was that the Earth was part of a geocentric system, that the universe orbited around the Earth. This view had been taught for centuries and was based upon a, quote, common sense reading of passages such as Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14. It just so happened that the life of Copernicus overlapped with a very important figure in Christian history, Martin Luther. Luther is, of course, famous for being the spark that ignited the Protestant Reformation in Europe. In these clips, noted young earth creationist Ken Ham makes repeated appeal to Luther for historical support of the young earth view. But if we look at 18 centuries of biblical scholarship, and if you start talking about Calvin and, and Luther as well, and Wesley, I mean, these guys all believed in six literal days, and the earth and the universe, in fact, is only thousands of years old. In fact, they talk about 5,000, uh, 6,000 years old. If uh, Calvin, Luther, and Wesley believed in six days, and going back in history, we have Ambrose, we have Irenaeus, uh, and uh, we, we have uh, Basil, all believing in 24-hour days, and I've got the quotes saying they believe in 24-hour days. But those are disputed Eight, 18, claims. They're, they're not disputed. Yes, they 18, are. Uh, 18 centuries of scholarship where the majority opinion was young earth and uh, six 24-hour days, and some of the great scholars today, the turning point was in the 18th century because of the millions of years. Nearly all of the church fathers um, talked about five to 6,000 years, so nearly all of the church fathers did that, and Calvin did that, and Luther did that as well, and Wesley did that. He talked about uh, 4,000 years, uh, basically, from, um, uh, I have to check my notes here on, on Wesley, but he was talking about 4,000 years from creation to Christ, that's right. Yeah. Um, and so, when you have all of these greats who added up the dates, do you mean Luther went against the Holy Spirit there? You mean Calvin did? You mean most of the church fathers did? For all of his accomplishments, Luther was a product of his time, in that he also believed the Bible supported a geocentric cosmology. Upon hearing of the heliocentric views of Copernicus, Luther rejected them as heresy. Quote, There was mention of a certain new astrologer who wanted to prove that the earth moves and not the sky, the sun, and the moon. This would be as if somebody were riding on a cart or in a ship and imagine that he was standing still while the earth and the trees were moving, Luther remarked. So it goes now, whoever wants to be clever must agree with nothing that others esteem. He must do something of his own. This is what that fellow does, who wishes to turn the whole of astronomy upside down. Even in these things that are thrown into disorder, I believe the holy scriptures. For Joshua commanded the sun to stand still and not the earth. History has gone on to vindicate Copernicus and show that Luther, for all of his theological contributions, was wrong in this area. The important takeaway for this discussion is that Luther's views, sincere as they were, lacked a full knowledge of the biblical context. Egyptian hieroglyphs were only first deciphered in 1822 by Jean-Francois Champollion. Likewise, the cuneiform script of the cultures of ancient Mesopotamia was not fully deciphered until 1857. It's only been in these last roughly 200 years that we have been able to study firsthand the world of Moses, as well as that of much of the Old Testament. Luther and his contemporaries didn't know about any of this yet. The result is that scripture did not teach what they thought it did. Organizations such as Answers in Genesis and Creation Ministries International operate on a heliocentric cosmology, yet they are opposing the prevailing scientific views of Earth's antiquity on the basis of, quote, what the Bible says. Now, if I said to you, wait a minute, wait a minute, secular scientists say that a man can't rise from the dead. Shouldn't we take outside ideas and reinterpret that? No, you can't do that. We believe in the virgin birth? Yes, why? Well, because uh, scripture says so. Well, wait a minute. Uh, you know, scientists say you can't have a virgin birth, secular scientists, so shouldn't we reinterpret it? No. And you could go right through scripture like yeah. this, right? But as soon as we come to Genesis in this day and age, you know what we find in our church? When we say God created in six days, death came after sin, there was a global flood. In fact, think about the New Testament. Paul, in Romans 5, talking about the gospel, by one man, talking about Adam, sin entered the world, and death by sin, talking about Genesis. 1 Corinthians 15, 45, Adam was the first man. 1 Corinthians 11, the woman is of the man, the woman is of the man. The woman came from the man, not from an ape woman, from the man. In fact, Jesus, in Matthew 19, asked about marriage, said, haven't you read the authority of the word? He made them at the beginning male and female, mm. and you become one flesh. He quoted from Genesis 1 and 2 as history. 
But we have whole generations of kids in our churches today that are told you can believe in the millions of years and evolution, you can reinterpret scripture here, you don't have to take that as written, you can believe in a local flood, you don't have to believe in a global flood. And you know what's happening? It's unlocked a door to undermine biblical authority. And we've got to be careful that we're not trying to act as if we know, you know more than what God's Word says. It's interesting that I found out ever since uh, the, the uh, 18th uh, century, what you find is a change in the commentaries where they started reinterpreting the days because of billions of years. So there's something outside of scripture here that's really driving their interpretation. Believing in millions of years and reinterpreting scripture undermines the authority of scripture and therefore it, it undermines all of scripture. Yeah, but and how? and beca because you're using man's ideas to reinterpret the word. This is the same ground on which Luther and his contemporaries were proven wrong. Not because the Bible itself was wrong, but because how they believe it should be interpreted was wrong. Quote, it is unwise in theologians to array themselves needlessly against the teachings of science. Romanists and Protestants vainly resisted the adoption of the Copernican theory of our solar system. They interpreted the Bible in a sense contradictory to that theory. So far as in them lay, they stake the authority of the Bible on the correctness of their interpretation. The theory proved to be true, and the received interpretation had to be given up. The Bible, however, has received no injury, although theologians have been taught an important lesson. That is, to let science take its course, assured that the scriptures will accommodate themselves to all well-authenticated scientific facts in time to come, as they have in the past. It may very well be that further accumulation of data will sway the scientific consensus to the Earth and universe being young at some point in the future. I am open to such a possibility. I'm also open to the possibility that those ideas are refuted. Scientists of all fields should be open to discuss these ideas wherever the data points. As far as scripture is concerned, this discussion will only influence our interpretation of the Bible and not the Bible itself. It's not young Earth versus old Earth. It's what does this say? There are different views of baptism, and there are some different views of eschatology, pre-mill, post-mill, R-mill, windmill, whatever. <laughs> uh, there's different <laughs> views of eschatology, yeah. right? Gotcha. But if we're really honest, the, the bottom line, in, in, in an ultimate sense, mostly when people are disagreeing on those things, they're arguing from Scripture. It could be their view of Israel, their view of the church, their view of Daniel, their view of Ezekiel, whatever, or their view of of circumcision and, 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 and baptism, and, and, and so it goes on. But the reason there's disagreement on Genesis is not, we're not really arguing about what's here. We're really saying we've we got to have the Big Bang and the billions of years and so on, we've got to somehow fit that into Scripture. It's really taking outside ideas to add into Scripture. Quote, It is admitted that theologians are not infallible in the interpretation of Scripture. It may, therefore, happen in the future, as it has in the past, that interpretations of the Bible, long confidently received, must be modified or abandoned to bring revelation into harmony with what God teaches in his works. This change of view as to the true meaning of the Bible may be a painful trial to the church, but it does not in the least impair the authority of the scriptures. They remain infallible. We are merely convicted of having mistaken their meaning. I believe that the Young Earth interpretation's insistence on a literal, quote, common sense reading of the Bible actually creates as many problems as it purports to solve. I think most Christians, uh, when we talk about, uh, for example, the life of Christ, those are understood to be historical accounts. Why is it that when we look at the account in Genesis that we have a tendency not to want to do that? We have a tendency not to do it because we're constantly exhorted to not see it that way. From the culture around us? The culture around us, uh, from theologians, uh, modern theologians who are trying to somehow, in their minds, uh, fit the truths of Scripture with uh, the so-called discoveries of mm -hmm. science, mm -hmm. which if you know anything about the history of science, you know is an incredibly unreliable mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly bombarded with this message that we have to adjust our view. Sure, there are people who object to a young earth interpretation because they are naturalists or atheists who do not believe the Bible's testimony at all. That's not me, nor is it the perspective of those who would agree with me, either at present or from the past. Proponents of a young earth interpretation hang their hat on interpreting the Bible consistently. 
As much as this call to consistency is championed, I believe that the Young Earth interpretation forces the reader to be fundamentally inconsistent with how they interpret the Bible. We will turn our attention to some of these instances.